How's it going guys, Chris here with another Battlefield 5 weapon guide for you today, and in this video we're going to be taking a good look at the M1919A6, a medium machine gun for the support class which came along in the Tides of War Chapter 5 Pacific update. So the M1919 was another American machine gun designed by John Browning, a guy who made quite a lot of the weapons for US forces commonly used throughout both world wars. And the year after the Great War, in 1919, he pretty much finished modifying one of his already existing guns, the M1917, to be compatible with tanks by essentially getting rid of its water jacket. The M1919 still had a lot of firepower, being a 30 calibre weapon with a 250 round belt, and with it now having a lighter perforated jacket, this meant that it could be installed onto vehicles and aircraft too. But from this point on, there were quite a few different variants of the gun, designed for a mix of purposes some for cavalry units, and others for infantry. The M1919A4, made in 1936, was the most popular model, used by both infantry, set up in defensive positions, along with being mounted on vehicles. But it wasn't exactly as portable as those German MMGs, the MG34 and the MG42. Another one of Browning's weapons, the BAR, was however, but couldn't sustain fire for very long durations, with it only having a small ammo capacity. So that's where the M1919A6 comes into the scene, designed to rival those German machine guns, being a somewhat more manoeuvrable solution that could still keep the bullets whizzing by. The M1919A6 was first put into the hands of American troops in 1943, complete with a lighter barrel, carrying handle, shoulder stock and bipod, all intended to make the gun more infantry friendly. But it was still a bit beefier and more cumbersome than its competitors, weighing more than both the MG34 and the MG42 also being a bit awkward to use. The M1919A6 specifically was introduced into the war a little bit too late to have a significant impact, but nevertheless, the M1919 as a series of machine guns did see a lot of action throughout and beyond, still being an effective addition to the US Armed Forces and other allied nations. Anyway, time to look at the stats. As far as power goes, the M1919 has a pretty interesting damage model, which is a little bit different to a lot of the other MMGs. It deals a maximum of 20 damage up to 30 meters, allowing it to kill in 5 shots within those earlier distances. As your bullets travel further, damage is going to drop down, up until they reach the range of 100 meters, where they'll deal the minimum damage of 13.2, basically meaning that anywhere beyond 75 meters, it'll typically take up to 8 shots to put the other guy down on the floor. This damage model means that the M1919 can actually retain its power over distance better than normal, often allowing it to kill in less bullets than most of the other MMGs. The catch is, the gun fires a fair bit slower than the others, having a base fire rate of just 600 RPM. So this balances things out a bit, putting its time to kill on a similar sort of level. In close quarters, this damage model and fire rate combo actually goes against the weapon's effectiveness, often making it less useful for aggressive play. Other MMGs shoot faster and kill easier in CQC, generally making them superior here, but the M1919 tends to shine more when you fire at people further away, giving the gun better defensive qualities. You can up the fire rate a bit by using the light bolt specialization, which is going to boost it up to 670 RPM, but it's still going to be a fairly slow shooting gun, even if you do, giving it the same fire rate as the base MG34. This will help to decrease that time to kill but it's still going to be one of the slowest shooting MMGs in the class nevertheless, making it slightly more passive aggressive, but not exactly something you'd want to use with a gung-ho mindset. To complement the M1919's extra range damage, the gun's also got a really nice recoil pattern to go along with it. That vertical recoil is at a value of 0.844, one of the lowest in the class, just slightly beaten by the MG34 by a tiny bit and this can be lowered even further with the recoil buffer spec, making the weapon extremely stable, letting you open fire quite comfortably without you having to worry about the gun drifting upwards too much. Those horizontal values are also on the lower side of the spectrum too, having left and right recoil figures of 0.14. They're not the best, but they're still low enough to make the gun feel accurate and easy to aim with, and just like with the vertical recoil, these figures can be reduced through specialisations. Applying the ported barrel is going to drop them down to just 0.084, and because the M1919 shoots at a slower pace than the average MMG, this means that the recoil's not going to stack up quite as fast, making the gun both very accurate and stable, which is great for long-range fights. 
Another thing that goes really well with that recoil pattern, helping its use over further distances, is the fact that it's blessed with a higher than average muzzle velocity, with its bullets travelling at the speed of 800 meters per second, so pretty fast. But it's not over there, because with high velocity bullets, you can increase that bullet speed even more, ramping it up to an impressive 910 meters per second, giving it one of the quickest muzzle velocities in the whole game. All of these factors combined together make the M1919A6 a very manageable gun to use, as you'll barely have to lead your target's movements as they run around in the distance, and you won't have to worry about it kicking around all over the place when you plant it down with that bipod setup. Now, unlike quite a few of the other MMGs in the support class, the M1919 actually starts out with a pretty huge belt of rounds, having up to 250 shots at any given time. A few of the other guns can have their capacities increased up to a similar sort of amount through specialisations, but the fact that the M1919 has this advantage straight out of the gate, this already gives you loads of bullets to go mad with, opening up an extra specialisation choice for something else, which is always a nice little bonus. 250 shots is the maximum the gun can hold, but this is plenty to get the job done, as you'll barely ever seem to run out of bullets, allowing you to keep going and going without being interrupted by an empty belt. With the M1919 also firing at one of the steadiest paces in the class, this also means that you're not going to burn through that ammo very quickly either, like you probably would with the MG42 or the VGO. With it typically taking less rounds to kill over distance, and with this fire rate being pretty easy to manage, I guess you could say that the M1919 is one of the most reliable weapons in the game, having some very sustainable belts that are going to seem to last a lot longer than others. This means that you'll rarely need to reload, but of course you will need to eventually, because those belts aren't going to last forever, and whenever you do need to reload, it's going to take 4.45 seconds every time, generally putting them on the lengthy side, but making them feel quite consistent, with both tactical and empty reloads essentially being the same. You can speed those reloads up a bit with a quick reload spec, though generally speaking you should be fine enough most of the time without needing to, so long as you keep an eye on your ammo count and keep the gun topped up whenever you're in a safe position to do so. Anyway, moving over to the specialisations, at the top of the M1919 spec tree, you'll be able to find Recall Buffer on the left and Quick Reload on the right. Picking the Recall Buffer is a no-brainer, as those reloads shouldn't really be too much of an issue. They might take a while, but you won't need to perform them very often, rendering the Quick Reload spec a bit pointless in most cases. Recall Buffer is therefore going to be more useful for general play, increasing stability and making it even easier to aim with while sustaining fire, so I'd probably recommend choosing that one instead as it'll help boost the gun's effectiveness even more over range. Further down the spec tree, on the left side, you'll be able to find the light bolt and flashless propellant on the left, generally reducing time to kill, and on the right, you'll find the improved bipod and ported barrel, improving the gun's precision from stationary positions. Because the M1919 is only really useful when you've got that bipod set up, I tend to prefer going down the right side, as you'll be able to make the weapon super accurate, complementing its long-ranged effectiveness even more. The fire rate boost provided by the light bolt spec does make the gun a tad more aggressive, but it doesn't exactly improve it by miles, as it's still going to be a pretty defensive MMG at heart, nevertheless, which is why I'd rather play to the gun's strengths and lower that recoil as much as possible. Last of all, at the bottom, the M1919's got chrome lining on the left and high velocity bullets on the right. Chrome lining basically allows you to fire in longer durations before the gun starts to overheat but I find that this can be easily countered by simply letting go of the trigger and bursting your shots. Muzzle velocity is already on the high side, but because I want to improve the gun as much as possible for longer range fights, high velocity bullets is probably going to be the more useful choice for doing so, making those shots go exactly where you want them to quickly. So, in conclusion. The M1919A6 is basically the support class's slow but accurate MMG that typically performs at its best when you're playing defensively, gunning down enemies over mid to long ranges. It's got one of the slowest fire rates of the pack, but to compensate for this, it can generally retain a higher damage output over range, and therefore killing less shots against players further away. This still gives the gun some reasonably decent times to kill speeds over distance. It's not exactly a powerhouse up close like the MG42, making it less competitive for close quarter use and so you're probably going to be outmatched by a lot of the other faster shooting weapons in the game if you get caught out by an opponent nearby. But it's over those further distances beyond CQC where the M1919 tends to be the more effective machine gun. 
This is massively influenced by the weapon's accuracy stats, with it having one of the best recoil patterns of the lot. That low vertical recoil makes the gun really stable, allowing you to keep hold of the trigger and blast out longer streams of bullets without having to worry about your line of fire drifting upwards too much. And with it also having a decent horizontal value and a steady rate of fire, these factors should make the M1919 feel quite precise and easy to aim with, which is perfect for when you're set up in a defensive position, taking care of oncoming enemies advancing forwards. To complement its effectiveness over range, the gun's also got a high muzzle velocity, which should make it seem even more accurate against players far away. And due to it having such a large ammo capacity, those 250 round belts are going to let you keep the bullets flying, making the gun quite reliable. Reloads can be a bit sluggish, especially if you get surrounded when you're low on shots, but this shouldn't really be a common problem, with the gun usually having enough bullets to see you through most fights fine enough. And overall, the M1919A6 might sometimes seem like a bit of an awkward choice for anyone who likes to play aggressively, but it does what the MMG was designed to do very well, providing you with tons of ammo for laying down accurate fire against enemies attacking your position. So that's it for another one folks, hope you enjoyed the guide. If you did, you know what to do. And if you've not subscribed yet, well now's a pretty good time to do so. Just remember to hit the notifications bell and select see all notifications if you want to be the first to see new content coming up in the future. Thanks for watching guys, and I'll be seeing you in that next episode.